of weeks ago, I uploaded a channel video comparing my Canon 100-500 RF lens to my Canon 500 f4 EF prime lens. And you can view this video by following the link in the description below. My conclusion was that the 100-500 performed incredibly well in almost all circumstances. And the only thing that the 500 prime did better was to give a better background blur or bouquet than the 100 to 500, but only when the background is close behind the subject. With a clear distant background, there's no advantage to using the 500 prime lens. Now I did mention that I could overcome this by adding additional background blur in Photoshop. And since posting the video, I've had several messages from viewers requesting advice on exactly how I go about adding blur to my images. So today, I'm going to take a couple of images into Photoshop and using the Photoshop blurring feature, I'm going to show you how to realistically blur your backgrounds to make your subject really stand out. Hi, I'm Ken Hatfield. Welcome to my Better Photography channel. So what I'm going to deal with today is the background bouquet or blurring. Clearly the F4 has an advantage here because it gives absolutely fantastic blurring behind the image. Now the RF 100-500 does a really great job and it's nearly there, it's not that far away. Like I said earlier, if the background is a long way away from the subject, I really can't compare the two, it's excellent. But the one thing it's not quite so good at is when the background's a little closer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you blurring technique that is very, very simple. I've looked at lots and lots of way of blurring images in Photoshop. Some of these wonderful experts who can do magic with Photoshop have actually showed some great techniques to do great background blurring. However, often as not, there's sometimes six, seven, eight, ten steps to follow, which are sometimes quite complicated, involving masking or image removal and bring it back in again. You know, saving is a smart object. I mean, by the time I follow the tutorial and get to the tenth step, I've forgotten what the first three are. So I've been looking to find a much simpler way to do it. And I'm going to share with you today something that everyone can do. It's so simple, just a few steps, and you should be able to get a really good blurred background. First of all, you need to go to your Adobe Creative Cloud account. You will go down to the left-hand side here to beta apps, and then it gives you an option of all the beta apps for all the Adobe products. What we're looking at is Photoshop. Basically, mine is shown as already downloaded. You won't get an option to open there, you'll get an option to install. So you need to install it and then it will open up onto your desktop. Don't worry, what will happen is it will actually come in as a standalone. It will not affect your existing Photoshop. It runs side by side so you don't lose anything on your original Photoshop download. So, up to the desktop, open up Photoshop beta. What I'm going to do there is I'm just going to drag in an image there. To actually do some processing. I'm going to make, keep this as simple as possible. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to actually blur the background more but by using a much simpler process to get to where I want to be. So the first thing I'm going to do as always with the, you then go to the layer and duplicate the layer. So there we have a background copy and then I'm going to go down to select subject and you can see it's already done a decent job of selecting the subject, the little marching ants that are going there, but I'm going to improve that a little. I shall go up my selection tool there, and I'm just going to pull down the selection until I'm happy that it's fully covering the subject. I'm going to just reduce that a little bit and bring it down to the edge of the tail. That's that done there. So as you can see, it's done a, a really good job of selecting the image. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, lens blur and i'll bring up the image so if we look across at the toolbar on the right hand side you can see there is a option for a faster processing time or a more accurate obviously i think on that we need more accurate the preview button is there which we'll use once we've applied the blurring down here uh, what we need to look at mainly is these three tools here radius blade curvature and rotation, all of which control the amount of blur shown on the background of this image. So let's do maximum because I want you to be able to see clearly the effect of this. Let's go maximum on all three. 
and what you're going to find then is if you look down to the left hand side here it's actually processing watch for that you may think it's not actually processing but it is takes a little bit of time it's quite quick on my computer it may take yours a little more time if you've got a slower computer but when you look here well, let's go to the preview that's a before that's the after that's a before and that's the after now to be perfectly honest looking across here you can see everything is in place there is no actually ghosting as i can see there which is a, a common problem when you you do blurring in the background and to me that's a very acceptable blurring technique to be able to effectively and realistically blur the background without it being obvious that a blur has actually been applied all we then need to do there is to go back it'll save and then get rid of the selection tool i deselect i'll show you the before and the after that's obviously after that was the before just by turning off the background copy back and forth. And to me, that's done a really, really good job. And if I compare this image with an image that was taken by my 500 F4, well, I think you can see I can easily compensate for the fact that I, I'm shooting here at F10, would you believe? This really makes it a no-brainer for me to actually dispose of my 500, my heavy camera, which I find very difficult to get abroad in aircraft because of the size and the weight, but even more so to have it over my shoulder on a tripod because it really, you can't handhold it. This gives me the opportunity to use a much lighter kit and still get the same effect on certain images. I don't want to blur the background on everything, but when it's really necessary, maybe a competition picture or perhaps an image for press, then these few minutes in Photoshop certainly compensate me for the loss of my 500 f4 so let's look at another image now and blur a different way for a different reason i'm not going to save that i'm simply going to bring the next image in and this one is to reflect my wedding images now this is one occasion where this beautiful bride actually suggested a location on the way back from her ceremony to the reception hall and I was caught unaware because I didn't have with me the lens I would normally use in these circumstances, which is my Canon 70 to 200 f 2.8, which gives a remarkable background blur. However, let's look again at how we can actually make this a workable image with a really nice smooth background. Again, I'm actually going to go and copy the layer, uh, duplicate that now. Right, so then we're working non-destructively. We can get rid of that layer and it goes back to the original image. So what I'm then going to do, just bring that in a wee bit. I'm going to select the subject. And again, look at what it's done to that. As you can see, it hasn't quite hit on the flowers there. Let's get rid of that. Let's adjust the selection so that we're happy that everything that we have there is in the right position. As you can see, that's done a fantastic job. So what we need to do now is invert the mask. So that will then apply the blur to the background rather than onto the bride. We'll go up to filter. This time we're going to go to blur gallery and I'm going to use field blur. This is just the setting that I've tested all of these and this is the one that I like the best. And in the field blur, you can see there's a panel comes up here and this is where you can actually make alterations to the amount of blur. And you can see the main tool here is the blur tool up here. And as you can see, you can do some very extreme things here. I'm not going to do that. What I'm simply going to do is bring it back to what I think the 7200 would do with that image had I had it with me at that moment in time. And I think it would have been something like that, which is great. Okay, so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to go OK. Now I hear you all screaming, but what about the foreground? It doesn't look right. It's blurred all the way right to the front, which it wouldn't be. Of course it wouldn't be, no. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a change. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure we're on the background, copy, apply a mask. As you can see, the mask is applied then. But because the area we want to remove is in white there, we need to make sure we use a black background here. That's OK. And then we go to the brush tool. Make sure the brush tool is at 100% and then simply brush across the bottom third or so of the image, which would normally be the area that is in full focus. I'll just take that across there, all at 100%. And then make my brush a little smaller. And what I'm going to do now is reduce the opacity down to about 40%. And what I then do is I just bring that across the center of the image 
removes the blur but not as harshly as below so you get a kind of a middle ground blur there if you feel that that's not quite right bring it right down and just do another pass until you feel that that's more appropriate so bring that down and just play with that until such times you feel that the progression of the blur is to your satisfaction and there shouldn't be any area where the blur is obvious between the two and to me that has done a good job as far as I'm concerned that's what I would expect to see with me 7200 f2.8 again this is a much simpler process than other techniques I've seen where you have to put graduated filters in or whatever to grade the blur up from fully sharp at the bottom through to the the blur at the top to me in my eye that's acceptable and uh, I think that's a super way of doing it much easier much quicker and of course I did shoot numerous images in this location and I've been able to apply this technique very quickly to all of them so that's my technique for blurring backgrounds in a simple easy time efficient way and I'm going to continue to produce tutorials that show easier ways to actually process your images uh, using Photoshop not just for time consuming but for those people who are not conversant with Photoshop some of these techniques as good as they are from these wonderful people who are expert at Photoshop they are sometimes just too complicated for you to get your head around. It's a steep learning process and this just does a little shortcut that allows you to actually apply the effect without having to have an encyclopedic knowledge of Photoshop. So I hope you find this useful. In the meantime, see you next time on the Better Photography Channel.